So how did Tupac try to top Tretch from Naughty by Nature when Tretch did OPP? <laughs> There's a story out about that. How, yeah, how when I heard when he, I was with him when he heard it, when he heard OPP. Okay. And he, the first thing that came out of his mouth was, wow. He listened to it and he was like, man. And it was playing. They, they had it on rotation all day long. So right. everywhere we went, we would hear this song. Okay. And he was like, man, I got to get Tretch, man. He'll be laughing. He'll hear it and he'll start laughing. And he'll be like, man, he did it. He did it. But I got to get, I got to do it too. I got to do better than, I got to do, you know, my song got to be better than that. Like so, my single right. got to be better than that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because at this time, Naughty got a hit. Yeah, Naughty got a hit. Pop right. don't have a hit. Right. I, I think Pop Naughty was first with their hit. Pop, right. Brenda got a baby didn't come out yet. Right. I think uh, I think uh, or I get around. Okay. I get around was Pop's biggest first big hit, right? right. But he had one of my homies call. Right? Okay, right. he had Brenda's got a baby. That wasn't really radio Family, top forty right. type right. of. Right. But OPP was. And Pac was feeling that, man. He was like, man, if I can get a hit like that. Right. You know, Pac's, Pac's journey was all about progress, mm -hmm. slow progress. Mm -hmm. And you can you notice it in his music. Right. From uh to Pac's Now to Me Against the World, right? You know you 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 no, from to Pac's Now to Strictly for My Niggas, mm -hmm. right? And then to Me Against the World, you can see and hear the progress, and the, the process, the right. growth, the right. development in his music. And in, in between uh, Tupacalypse Now and Strictly For My Niggas, he was trying to find that formula. Okay. Right? And he was, uh, that process was very difficult for him because mm -hmm. he wanted to stay true to what he wanted to rap about right, right. and he wanted to find a common, you know, a song that can relate to the women or right. whoever, the Absolutely. girls or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he finally did it with uh, uh, Keep Your Head Up and I Get Around, right. right? That was finally two of the songs that, but Tretch joint was way before that, you know, yeah. maybe a year or so before that. And the crazy part about the OPP is they sampled that Jackson 5. Yeah. Da, da, so, da, that, yeah, da, yeah. so yeah, so that kind of gave it that before we understood what the music business yeah, is like when you sample somebody else Simone yeah. and then they pushing the record because yeah. the record is earning money for both sides. That's of, right. For, for both sides that's of the right. thing. So. And that sample was very popular. You know, that's Absolutely. ABC. You right, know what right, I'm saying? right. Yeah, yeah. So Pop was trying to top that. Yeah, he was trying to top it, but it was a friendly type of competition. competition. Okay. You know, he, 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 that was his man. Trust was his man. So yeah, that yeah. was just like. Shout man. out to Tretch too. Shout out. Shout God yeah. bless you, Tress, man. Shout, Shout out, out to Tress. But that was, that was a friendly competition for okay, him. Okay, okay. You know? Right. How do you think that Tupac's music changed from his first album to when he joined Death Row? Mm -hmm. From your perspective, how do you think that Tupac's music changed? For the better or worse? Yeah. Number one, the biggest change was he stopped talking. Yo, to, most of everything Tupac said out of his mouth was death. You know, he was infatuated with this, with death. He would talk about death all the time in his music. That's number one. That changed. And now, that changed later? Yeah, later. Okay. That changed like after Me Against the World. Okay. Right? Okay. Me Against the World was going to be an album full of death. Mm -hmm. He changed, he changed a lot of songs. He placed okay. a lot of songs on there. Okay. You know, like So Many Tears, mm -hmm. uh, Young Niggas, mm -hmm. you know, Dope, uh, Heavy in the Game. One of my you know, favorites. Heavy in the Game. Yeah, that was dope. You know, those were going to be Death Around the Corner. There were all these other songs. That that was going to be those. But he changed. So he was going through that process then, right? But then he started to become, in, in his music, in the evolution of his music, I noticed he started to become more introspective. Okay. And he started talking about things that was deep to him and painful to him, not just death, mm -hmm. right? And not just street life, but his family life, man. How can I be a better person? Okay. You know, um, how can I be more of service to what's going on among my people? You know what I mean? Right. I, I started hearing that in his music. You know, I'll give you a million examples, man. Like, he got, like, crazy. Mm -hmm. Very introspective song. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. White Man's World. Yes. You know, very intimate social commentary, very introspective about, you know, uh, what can he do? To, right. Add to make the world better. You dig? Right. And change the narrative. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then he got deeper songs like um, 
Back for Everything AO. Okay. On uh this is on uh what's the name of the album? Until the end of time. Okay. Right? Back there the back for everything they owe is about slavery. Right. And uh the middle passages, dude. Right. Right. Hey, now how you write a song about the middle passages, right? That's that is thought provoking, compelling, mm -hmm. you know, it, it it resonates. Right. And also factual. And factual. Right. And it resonates. You know what I'm saying? So I that's where he was headed. Right. Hail Mary. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, dealing and tackling, uh, you know, the idea of re religion and mm -hmm. spirituality. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, this is where he's going. He's mm -hmm. heading in that direction. direction right. Right. <clears throat> and all you can do when you're heading in that direction is go further. You don't go backwards. Yeah. You know, you go further okay. in that direction. And that's where he was heading, man. And, you know, Park was extremely intelligent. He was very po polemic. He loves to debate. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and when, when you debate with him, even if you have your own point, point of view before you start the debate, mm -hmm. you will start doing the debate, getting with his point of view. Right. And you might abandon your point of view for his point of view. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's very intelligent in that way. Right. And very influential. Right? Very influential. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that's the only thing that could really make you... uh uh, uh, do that, you know, he was very persuasive. Very persuasive, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, very well said. Yeah. yeah. Very uh, persuasive. 